call the Public Works and Planning Committee to order. Approve minutes. Need approve minutes first time. I have reviewed those minutes, Mr. Chairman, and I uh, would make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Cush? Here. Commissioner Nipper? Here. Commissioner Piercy? Here. Commissioner Serena? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Here. Commissioner Jernigan? Here. Okay. Highway Department. No report. No report. No. Building code. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mark Russell, Director Bell couldn't be here tonight, so uh, I'm going to give you the monthly report for September. Uh, the number of uh, single family dwelling permits was 55, the total was 276, the total fees collected were $85,647. We flip over, you'll see the development tax. $747,000 we took in September. The planning lots were $112,500 for a total of $859,500. And a cumulative of $1,432,500. And over in the uh, zoning enforcement on a monthly report, we had 210 violations. Questions or can answer? The development tax was a little higher this month. We had 328 apartments, so that's why that figure is so much higher. The for for uh, okay okay yeah that's 747,000. Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah, 328. Is that's a huge jump from right. from <laughs> the previous over a half a million dollar jump? Yeah. Okay. And there's still some more online in the next couple of months to aren't there apartments coming in probably i have to this yeah. year some more apartments coming well, maybe in. not the main city. city those may be <coughs> city okay all right all right let's see codes planning yet. <laughs> I, just gotta, yeah. I just gotta come up here. Uh, just a couple of things to discuss with you tonight. Uh, the first is our available lot inventory. We're looking at, uh, as of the end of September, looking at total available lots of 686, which is up about 80, well, 86 lots from this time last year. Again, we're, we're still, it's kind of trending up a little bit right now. We're seeing more subdivisions developed and we're starting to get to that time of year where there's not as many building permits issued. So this really isn't a terrible surprise, but uh, we're still kind of hanging in that six to 700 lot range at this point, which seems to be what we've sustained for the last uh, several months. So uh, just uh, unless you had other questions on that, uh, I'll move on to the rezoning report. Uh, not a whole lot to talk about in the rezoning report tonight. We just have one case that'll be before you next week. Uh, this is for property located on West Jefferson Pike. There's actually four separate properties. It's right there at the intersection of West Jefferson Pike and uh, 231 Lebanon Pike. Uh, again, there's four properties. All four of them were rezoned from agricultural to commercial back in the 70s. Uh, since that time, uh, the one farthest to the west, 155, has been utilized for a number of non-residential purposes. There was a grocery store, a gas station, other retail type uses. Uh, there was also a daycare and a restaurant approved back in 2006. 
Uh, two of the properties are currently zoned commercial neighborhood. That would be the addresses of 155 and 127 West Jefferson Pike. Uh, that was given that designation when the zoning ordinance, the new one, took effect back in 2013, uh, mainly because that was the most consistent zone with the uses that were approved for that property. Uh, the other two properties, there's one at 101 West Jefferson Pike, and then there's an unaddressed vacant lot between 101 and 127, uh, which are utilized uh, as residential units, and they were zoned for RM uh, during our rezoning back in 2013, the comprehensive rezoning that we did. So that's why those properties, since they weren't being utilized for commercial purposes, we went ahead and zoned them for residential. So you've got two zoned commercial neighborhood, two that are zoned residential. Uh, the applicant has indicated he would like to lease the existing business at 155, which again is currently zoned for commercial purposes, just commercial neighborhood. But the business that he would like to uh, place in that building, which is an air conditioning type uh, contracting office, uh, is only allowed uh, in commercial services and above. Uh, it's classified as construction, sales, and service, which is not allowed in commercial neighborhood, but is allowed in commercial services. So after speaking to the applicant about it, uh, we just recommended all four. We recommended you go with all four to, to zone them all. Uh, this is right in the uh, pretty much the heart of the Walter Hill neighborhood uh, commercial node, which was identified in our comprehensive plan. I don't really see these properties long term being residential. I see them more in a commercial uh, type manner. West Jefferson Pike, of course, at some point in the future will be widened, uh, as will Levin Pike again at some point in the future, uh, and then hopefully that intersection reworked. So this really just, in my mind, just makes sense. Uh, we had just really one phone call about this, and as far as uh, they had some concerns about the type of business that was being placed there, I think the concerns really that I got out of the, the phone call, and this was several weeks ago, was he just felt that there should be something more intense there than just a uh, air conditioning unit. I would anticipate over time that maybe these properties get combined and then they develop as, as one larger tract, possibly. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, discussion about this at the Planning Commission, uh, either maybe just a, a couple of questions here and there, uh, not many that I can recall really asking about. Uh, there was one question about uh, equipment delivery to uh, the property at 155 and the possibility of uh, you know, backing up traffic along West Jefferson Pike, but it was explained that the access to that property is actually off of Mandy Lane. There's a, a small cross street right there with some residential homes behind it. Uh, that's where their access is, so it wouldn't cause any problems uh, from having to back on the Jefferson Pike or anything. Uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this by a unanimous vote. Uh, I will say that uh, I will not be at the uh, County Commission meeting next week. Uh, Mike Hughes, our engineer, uh, he'll be kind of pinch hitting for me. I'll be at a conference. Uh, so uh, with this one case, though, but he said he would uh, do this. So I still will come before you. He'll present it. Again, I'll be happy to answer any questions. All the area they're working with is on 155 right now, correct? That's the one that they're really wanting. Or the old story. Correct. Say. Yes, sir. Going to leave the other two homes. Yeah. I don't home. think he's got any development uh, ideas, at least at this point. Has he had any discussion in with your, not, your constituents? Not, not the first call. Okay. I'm good with it. Is there a motion? It's a motion. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. All right. Good waste. All right. Here you go. Hey, how are you guys? Good. How are you? <laughs> My name's Hannah Bleem. Um, I'm the public media relations specialist for the solid waste department. So. First time meeting you all. <laughs> I'm just filling in for Mac today. He's at a conference, so um, we can just kind of move on to the landfill report. Um, it's moving on like normal. Uh, we did see an increase in residential brush and debris. Um, I'm guessing that's due to the fall weather. Um, people are working on the yards. They're 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 outside more. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that's that's why we have an increase there. So we had a lot more free service this go round um, due to that, since they get 2,000 pounds of free for free a year. You can move on to the convenience centers. So we saw um, a decrease 
and the amount of tonnage that we got at the convenience centers. Um, however, with fall break being this week, I'm guessing that's going to go up really quickly. Um, so <laughs> it's going <laughs> to increase a lot. So um, we're expecting that. And then the schools have been um, pretty consistent. Um, one thing that I tried to do this past month is kind of monitor the recycling a little bit more. Um, I was interested to see kind of what schools are doing really well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the Murfreesboro City schools, Hobgood, did fantastic. Um, we, we picked them up twice a week, and both times their recycling bin was full. So we're looking at increasing, um, you know, their space and, and, and possibly either giving them another bin or we'll pick up another time during the week. Um, so I'll kind of be evaluating that because there may be more schools like that. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see what, what that's looking like with the schools. Um, and then we definitely um, have been uh, getting some calls about the stop bars in our centers. Um, as you guys know, we had some changes. Um, fortunately, when we've explained it to everybody, uh, they've, they've understood. And normally, it's the issues are mitigated. Um, they understand the reasons for it. Um, occasionally we'll get somebody that's a little disgruntled and, and at that point, you know, I normally will tell people to, you know, you can always get a private service if it's bugging you, you know, um, at that point um, in, in a kind way. But um, fortunately we haven't had very many issues since then and, and no accidents since then. So <laughs> hopefully that will continue. Do, do you know if it's uh, impeding traffic or, or having traffic build on yeah. the shoulders on the yes. roads? Yes. Yeah, depending on the center. Um, obviously, weekly is our busiest center. Yeah. Um, and even with that extra entry that we created years ago, um, we're still seeing a line back up. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's been an issue. Um, specifically this week, uh, Leanna, we've gotten a lot more calls, um, specifically in that area. Um, and I'm guessing just because it's a smaller center, Obviously, depending on the size of the center, that's going to uh, matter when it comes to traffic. And um, some things we can't expect, some things we can at places like Rockvale, where um, we don't get a lot of traffic, we're seeing more yeah. just because of that extra line. But yeah, we are seeing an increase in that. Okay. Um, so depending on what we made because of Leanna, um, that's something I'll be talking to Mac about because we've gotten a lot of calls this week specifically from that center. So I don't know. Um, he lives over there, so he may be able to monitor a little yeah. bit and see what's going on. I mean, this is the double-edged sword, <laughs> uh, of yeah. course. Uh, we certainly don't like or want to put people on the shoulders or illegally right. on the shoulders yeah. to wait to get into the center. So uh, perhaps a plan with you and Mac. Yes. And, and, a road superintendent, yeah. and then this committee. Yes. Maybe we can come up with some kind of a yeah. plan of attack that would ease the danger yeah. that might be on roads where rock pressure is specifically. I know. Yeah. I, I think I kind of know exactly which centers. Uh, fortunately, you get to drive around and look at these rock, rock pressures. One right. of those. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I passed by there in the morning, uh, and. They were lined, started lining up uh, 45 minutes before it opened. Yeah. Right. And then, you know what, three miles down the road or whatever, that one uh, sits nearly empty. Yeah. But it's, you know, tucked back off the road and nobody knows about it. Part of that could be something that I can work on too is messaging and just seeing if that changes anything, making sure people are aware of that extra center because you wonder even if. if that would help anything beyond just changing <coughs> our center operations. I'm wondering if we... I don't know if uh, getting it in the newspaper yeah. somehow. Yeah, see, I, I agree. I think that's maybe mm -hmm. something extra I can even work on in the smallest form. I mean, who, who knows, really, if, if it will impact the amount that we have at Rock Crusher right. specifically. But you're right, it's, it's right down the road. It's, uh, like I say, every morning, it's, it's a big line there. Yeah. And like I said, it's starting 45 minutes before they open. Yeah. It, I mean, it, I'm not interested in my trash that much. I yeah. Mean, yeah. You can ride around my truck three or four days for all the time. Right. <laughs> so I agree. That, that's definitely a conversation. And even, even if I can, in the littlest way, help with that, even with messaging about our other centers that people can look into. And even over the phone, if people have a complaint about the center, if I can locate them to the next nearest one, it might be. Mm -hmm. If we can start doing that over the phone, I'm, I'm, I'll be interested to see what happens, you know, even there, you know, because that's something we can do right now. Right. Um, that might be something we can work on. Okay. So I agree. On the two in my district, you might consider redirecting the entrance traffic. Okay. 
they both turn in right to the compactor. Okay. To the packer side. If you could run it down one side and let them circle back to the yes. compactor, that would get more people off the highway. They'd still yeah. be in a line, but they would not be sitting on the side of 96 or Jefferson Pike. Yeah. And at Last Kessies, there's a full acre behind it if we needed it to make it deep to come out. And Walter Hill's already deep. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you could re, you could direct them down one side and let them turn and come back in to the compactor. They can throw their trash away going either direction. It and could be kind of like a weekly lane. That would we have that. several off the highway. Yeah. Okay. I that's going to yeah. spring that on no yeah. one. Hey. You're the chicken. Come <laughs> to the hey, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's letting me know as much as he can, so he, he involved me in as much as he can. But you might look at that. Yeah. 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 Um, I agree. And you may have the, to. The rock quarry. Doesn't the county own land in behind that site? Oh, yeah, we See? do. So that, that could be directed on in whatever it took to get them off the highway. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, especially, uh, that's definitely a, a big question I could have for Max. He knows exactly what those trucks need. Right. Um, that could be something we could do, you know, depending on the center and truck space. Because right. um, that's something I know Weekly Lane has an abundance of is truck space, and other centers have less. Mm -hmm. We may look at kind of evening that out a little bit more. I agree. Um, and I also wanted to take the time to let you guys know we have our household hazardous waste event coming up November 4th. <coughs> so before our next meeting, um, that will have hopefully happened either the day after or um, during that time. But household hazardous waste is a big one for us. Um, it keeps that stuff out of our landfill. Um, and what I decided to do this time with the messaging for that is collaborating with the fire department. We're not reaching as many people if we come at it from a solid waste perspective. If we come from a fire or an emergency perspective, um, if people think, okay, I can help protect my home in case of a fire, uh, they're, they're more likely to get rid of that hazardous waste versus if solid waste is saying, you need to dispose of this properly. Um, uh, I've decided to kind of possibly collaborate um, uh, with maybe other departments as well, even water. people pour that stuff down the drain and it affects them too. It affects all of us. Um, so the more we can bring other departments into even just a solid waste event, um, I think more people will uh, hear about it. Because um, we haven't had the greatest turnout and this year we have two household hazardous waste events. So that gives us an opportunity to experiment with some of the messaging and getting the event out there. Because um, I think that's what we struggle with the most is just people knowing about it. And then, uh, do you guys have any extra questions about that? Well, use, use the city engineer or county engineer okay. for the stormwater side. Yeah. He can give you some information about, you know, dumping and yeah, why, why you don't want to be pouring that down the yeah. drain. That's a huge deal. Besides it being illegal, but yeah. what the harm it could do. So, yeah. uh, I got a, uh, a thought, and I yeah. don't know, this could be when you send an article to the news journal for the waste uh, yeah. and all, I mean, uh, for the hazardous material and all that, send a picture with it. Yeah. And maybe Scott and them will put put it nearer to the front page than bury it behind. Right. Yes, I agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. The more we can kind of incorporate more media, and it, it's, it becomes more media friendly, um, especially if we can come from a safety perspective too. Um, I had the pleasure of talking with Channel 5 at one point um, when we had the accident at our centers. And uh, they let me know what some of their criteria is when they're filtering through press releases. And uh, the top one is safety. And household hazardous waste, if we're coming from a solid waste perspective, it doesn't affect you right now. Uh, you know, uh, but if we're coming from a fire or water perspective, oh, that affects you specifically and your home and, and the safety of your children. So um, we're, we're going to be sending out a press release with fire about that. And then, of course, yeah, I agree. Like I said, if they see the materials that can that need to go on that day, yeah. you know, uh, it kind of, well, it was, it sticks in my mind more a picture than it does just reading about it. Yeah, that's true. It does. And, and media is more likely to pay attention to it. Um, so if we can kind of change how we're releasing information, which we're slowly trying to do, um, it's just changing all of it. Cause I think we can, uh, hit a larger market of people and target of people that if we can change our messaging up and we're willing to kind of give up full control of our messaging, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that can be hard yeah. pill to swallow sometimes. Sometimes I want it to come from solid waste, but it may actually be better coming from fire department. Mm -hmm. It may be coming better coming from the water department. Um, 
So uh, I've definitely been working on that. Um, and Mac also wanted me to let you guys know that the four grants that we've applied for, they extended the deadline. So that means that we won't know yet. Okay. <laughs> he was hoping to know by now um, whether we were going to receive that. But um, because they extended that deadline for other people, um, we won't know for a few more weeks. They extended it by two weeks. So. So more people have a bite at the apple then. Yes. <laughs> but ho hopefully that, that will kind of give us them a chance to either let us know if we need to change anything. Yeah. If they notice it, that could give us a chance to um, add anything in there that we need to add or, you know, change any kind of information that we're giving them. So hopefully that will mean good things. <laughs> you guys have any more questions? I'd love to answer them. <laughs> Well, I, I think everyone on this committee is concerned about traffic buildup. Yeah. We, we don't want to solve one problem and create a bigger, more right. dangerous public safety yes. problem. So let's use our resources yeah. and other departments and, and see if we can make a plan. And you had some great ideas yeah. about maybe utilizing some existing land to, to broaden out, take those people off the street. I agree. So I agree. And, and the calls we get. They'll be in the line, but they'll be off the but if it, Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the main thing. Get them off. And, and it helps our center attendants, too. Um, they, they get the brunt of that, uh, the, the frustration. Um, so normally the first people I contact is our center attendants, and I ask them what's going on, because I know that they're right in the middle of it. And <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's hard, because I know residents are frustrated. Our center attendants can become frustrated. Right. And it's just not a good environment. Right. It's just, um, I, I, I never want anybody getting hurt or frustrated, and I agree it's a safety issue too. Yeah. Um, and that can be hard, specifically if we're trying to implement one staple thing into every center, and every center is built differently, every center runs differently, it's shaped differently, and mm -hmm. incorporating something like this and the same thing into every center, I can see how, you know, different issues will arise in different centers. We'll see all kinds of different things popping up, and we're going, okay. What do we do from here? So I, I agree, and I appreciate that you guys are even willing to look into that too, because it, it puts some stress on our department as well. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to, you know, we want we want people to be happy. At the same time, we want our, our center attendants to be safe. So I agree. Bring us some ideas. Yeah, I'll do that. We'll work on that. I make a motion to approve her report as presented. Second. Seven. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you guys. You very well. Thank you. You're welcome to come back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to. Anytime. Good job. Thank you. Nice to meet you.